Man, you're tall, man. No. Coco Chase. Go, Bob. Oh, mama. Oh. I'm Joe Bell. And I'm Ellie Collins. And this is the Weekly Blitz. And we are down here at the Tottenham Stadium. The Tottenham Stadium. You said that all flat. you got to be excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's just rewind a bit, shall we? We're here I'm at really the excited. Tottenham Stadium. That was me excited. We're here at the Tottenham Stadium. Yeah. Better? Incredible stuff. Thank you. I love Thank the you. vibes. <laughs> so, Ellie. Joel. My number one pick has to be the NFL games being in London. That's right, man. Today is the big one. It right? had to be. It had to be. I'd have been, I'd been a bit offended, actually, if you didn't say that. Listen, it's the only place to be. We're absolutely happy to be here. Now, is this the first game that you've come to, NFL game? It's my first NFL game, and I am buzzing. The vibe in the stadium is just, it's unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. We also need to find our seats because we've got to watch this game. It's about to kick off. Where are you sitting? Up there in the gods? Because I'm down here, pitch side. Oh, oh really? Yeah. You think you're the only one pitch side? Am I not? Let's check the tickets and find out. <laughs> and what a time it is. It's the first Sunday in October, the first game in London. What's up? Damn. Touchdown. Rodgers, quick throw, and it's intercepted. The Minnesota Vikings with a London game victory and a 5-0 record. My first pick is sneaking into the Vikings winning locker room after the game on Sunday. Oh, first game of the NFL London games. What was it like here? I thought the atmosphere was amazing. The fans were loud. They were engaged the whole time. I really loved that uh, skull chant at the end. I felt like uh, I was back at US Bank Stadium playing a home game in Minneapolis. But it was, it was tremendous. It's my second time playing in London and it's always a, a great experience. What's the, do you ever get out and actually see any of London? Have you ever been able to see any touristy stuff over here? Uh, this trip was the first time. Uh, uh, went into the city a little bit uh, yesterday. Uh, went to the borough market, tasting all sorts of foods. It was uh, tasting also. It's like what? Uh, well, I had to get the fish and chips. Oh, mm. oh. Scrambled donuts were a go-to. The chocolate strawberries. <laughs> yeah, boy. And then got some oyster. I mean, whatever I was catching my eye, I, I was uh, taking a bite of. It was uh, it was good though. It was a really cool spot. Christian, big win. How are you feeling? Man, I feel great, man. Uh, just to pull off a win like that, how we did it, and uh, the defense really. Holding their own this whole game, man, is special. It, it feels amazing. And, and the way that we did it, uh, and hopefully we can keep this thing rolling. Hang on a minute. You would think that we've had enough here at Tottenham Stadium because we were here yesterday, right? But no, no, no. Here we are. You've got flag football going on in the background. An amazing stadium. Music, games, fun, the whole lot. It's unbelievable. I think there's so much going on here this week. And obviously, in the lead up to another big game in the stadium on Sunday. So, my second pick this week has to be the Drip of London. Whoa, I Mitchell and Ness, I like that. It is Mitchell and Ness, I see yours is Mitchell Come and Ness on too. now, dripping, dripping. <laughs> Obviously we've been in the merch store. <laughs> but we were both there yesterday, we saw it in person. We have our own thoughts on what the players were wearing. So, first up, we have got Harrison Phillip. Oh yes! Yeah. Oh yes, I'm feeling it. See, that's smart, you know? You've got the Peaky Blinders hat over there. Oh, I don't pay for suits. My suits are on the house. Harrison Smith! Duo. And Harrison Phillips! No. Looking good on the field right there. So, moving on to the next one, we have got the main man. We have got Justin Jefferson. Check this out. Come on, my guy. What has he got for us? Oh, no, no, You're no. You're not no. a fan either? No, I'm not no, a fan. no, no, no. I'm sorry, Justin, but that is not... I'm Acceptable. sorry, nah, man, that is, I that's mean, like a bad disco's outfit. Okay, next up we've got Alan Lazard, mm. and check this out, what do you think? I know you're a big fan of a cohort, but... Yeah, not that cohort. No. Nah, I'm not really feeling that. Shades are good. You, you know? love the shades, anything I, I love the shades. the shades. Come on, man, I'm, I'm surprised I'm not wearing them now. I know, shades I've got mine good. on, wrapping really? it for the both of us, well done, but no. Well yeah, nah, if that's not really for me, you've got to drop that drink. Yeah, dropping that, Alan, sorry. Right, Aaron Rodgers. Boy. Didn't show up on the field yesterday, did he show up with the drip? You know what? I like that. It's trendy. I like it. That's just me on a regular day. Do you know what? It's, a, it's just everything. He's yeah. thought through every single item of that. Yeah. It's just it's just stylish. I'm loving well that. Well played. Drip. Well done, Aaron. Well done. 
Okay, so pick four. We got the London Games players this week to show us some of their signature celebration dances with a bit of a twist, all right? So can we name the footy celebrations mixed in here? Let's oh, go. Let's I'm going to be good at this. Oh, really? Yeah. Let's go for it then. Go, Bama. Go, Bama. Come on. Come on, that's you. Uh, 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 son. Uh, 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 is that really? That, no, wait, hang on a minute. Have you seen these before? Uh, uh, uh. Is that 4 0? Come on, four nil, <laughs> mate. Come on, I think I can do better as well. Do you reckon? Go on. What would your What would your celebration be? Come on, look at that. What? Hold on. Now, if you don't know Kirk Cousins or his gangster alter ego, Kirko Chase, this is the week to get to know. Get to know because the Atlanta Falcons' closed season signing quarterback Cousins completed. 42 passes that amounted to 509 yards in the Falcons' overtime victory over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Thursday night. That is more than any player all season in the NFL. Oh so, my God. Oh, why did you do that? Go. Why did you do that? How many passes would it take us, two Brits who have never thrown or caught in American football, to make 509 yards? Kill it, kill it. You've got to catch it. in the bag, let's go. That's risky, that one. Oh, was that not? No? no was it not? Sorry about that. No, Let's move back a little bit. Oh, Joel, it's too easy. Perfect throw. Lush. Perfect throw. I, just, I want to get over the 20. That's our aim. Over 20. Over 20. Oh, oh, I'm going to run. Oh, it doesn't count because it was off the field. Oh, my God. 83% pass completion rate. Oh, oh. no. Eight passes left. Catch this. Eddie, we're just going to go for it. What do I need? This needs to be a 33 yard pass. We want to eat. How far? 33. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Come on, we've got this back. Do you need, do you need a hug? Solid. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. One yard to match him. Oh, that was our best one yet. Yeah? Okay, we've matched his yardage, but on more passes than he did. We had 509 yards to make his passes. He did it in 42. He did it. What did we do? 46. 46. 46. Hang on a minute. Can I say about one point, we had a pass completion rate of like 86% or something. 86%. Definitely not 86. And then we ended on 72. 72. We really, really let fatigue get to us. We've not done it, so that's that. Coco Chains! We'll have you next time. Ellie, after that absolutely exhausting challenge, I think I'm not quite ready to join the NFL. I don't think I've got what it takes. And the prep is too difficult. Talking about prep, it's time for pick six. Last week, we saw Baker Mayfield prepare for the game in a slightly unusual way by watching old Mike Tyson fights. Can you imagine? My man's trying to get hyped. Yes, he is. And that might seem like a strange pre-game routine, but trust me, it gets Ranger, because Harrison Smith of the Vikings, he likes to take a shot of Tabasco sauce before the game. Pretty spicy if you Are you serious? Mm. Well, I'm being shady -ish. I'm being shady -ish. So Tabor Pepper of the San Francisco 49ers claims his fingernail cutting routine helps him before the start of the game, and that's why he has that long snap of success. There's like a cutoff of when I can clip my nails before a game. So if we play on Sunday, the last day that I can clip them is Friday. Because if I clip them on Saturday, they're going to be too short to play with. Well, Jake Elliott eats the same meal every night before a game, which is pizza and cheesecake. I'm Jake. I kick for the Philadelphia Eagles, and my pregame ritual is eating a slice of pizza before every game. I can definitely get behind that, you? Oh, for sure, man. Pizza and cheesecake. Sign me up. Nice. But speaking about prep, etc., what would your pregame routine be? Okay, hear me out. Mm -hmm. Whack on the headphones, full volume, banging out High School Musical tunes. A bit of breaking free. You're gonna hate this, right? But I've never watched High School Musical before. Well, next pick from me, and I have to go back to the London Games again because seeing what's going on behind me and the hype that is still here is just making me think about it all over again and I just cannot get over the week that I've had here. What are you wiping your tears for? I'm crying because I had such a good weekend. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's such an idiot. And it's not all just happening on the field. NFL had massive amounts of events happening in London from team pubs, meet and greets and tailgates and an insane immersive experience, which I have to say was ridiculously cool. How do you know it was ridiculously cool? Because I hosted it. No so way. So of course it was going to be cool. No way. <laughs> I did. It was amazing. They had this crazy fan experience. It was all going on. There were the cheerleaders from the Minnesota Vikings there. We had drumline. It was just incredible. So if you're sad that you missed out, there are more events coming next week with the Chicago Bears and Jacksonville Jaguars. Are you good? How's it going? Man, you're tall, man. You are tall. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Catch this pack? I was going to say, Ready? Was go, catch on, that? go long, go long. Go, 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 go. Bit yeah, yeah, there you go. Catch it. Hey. hey. Now, front back. Go, go. Front back. Oh, dear. Pick eight, and it just has to be the Minnesota Vikings because seeing them in the flesh, well, I have fallen in love. Are you a, are you a Vikings fan now? They are tempting me. They're tempting me, they're tempting me, but no, 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 no. Don't get ahead of yourself. The fans were definitely here for the Vikings this weekend, and the defense were too. Back in the day, they were so good, they got called the Purple People Eaters, and yesterday, they were hungry. Wow. They hit the Jets quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, seven times and intercepted him three times. And just when you can't love them enough, I saw this video of Justin Jefferson doing the gritty with a little boy from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. It completely melted my heart. That was so sweet. Are we going to be seeing them at the Super Bowl, Joel? Is it too early to say? Nah, it's not too early. We'll be seeing you in New Orleans. Cheers. <laughs> Mic drop. Pick nine, and it's that time again. It's the a different league, player of the week, three contenders. Ellie? As always. Let's check it out. 63 yards, pick six. OK, so anyone that doesn't know, a pick six is a touchdown from an interception. And this one was spectacular. It was incredible. And do you know why it was incredible? the person who got intercepted was the one and only Aaron Rodgers and do you know that has only happened to him five times in 19 years five times in 19 years yeah that so, means that's like a collector's item isn't it it literally is and oh it's from our guy God. ex Miami Dolphin Andrew Van Ginkel Man. it was incredible and we saw it in person so next that's up crazy. Lamar Jackson oh what Lamar are we Jackson saying? honestly man this is absolutely incredible look he points makes a pass Touchdown! That is, how on earth has that turned into a touchdown? That Honestly, is crazy. You don't know that he's going to make this pass. So he gives a bit of a sign. Uh, uh, uh. Little point over it. there. Unbelievable stuff, honestly. Okay, Ellis. Third and final. The third and final one. It's got to be one. a good one. Oh, it is, man. CJ Stroud and Nico Collins. Woo! Dream Team 67. Yada winds it, throws it That's over. Outrageous. Oh my gosh, the catch, the run. Amazing stuff. Down. Honestly, I checked the pose as well. Mine's like this. You know what I mean? He's like this. <laughs> he knows he's the man. He Amazing knows he's stuff, the stuff, man. man. Honestly, man. Well, which one are you picking out? Are those it's, three? Which one's our favourite? It's a tough one, man. But I have to go with Lamar Jackson, man. Really? I, honestly, I don't see how that turned into a touchdown. Like, especially when, look, he doubted a little bit. And then a player comes on and he's fending him off, fighting him off. And the next thing you know, he makes the throw and the catch to add to it as well. Absolutely fantastic. Final pick, and it is from the both of us. That's right, we look at week two of the London Games. There are a ton of activities going on this week again, and if you're around in London, you got to make sure you get down and check them out. If you want more info, make sure you head over to the socials for NFL UK and Ireland. And Joel, the Jags have had a terrible, like really terrible start to the season, winning just one out of five. However, they did look all right on Sunday, clawing back to win against the Indianapolis Colts. Get Thomas wide open! Maybe they're back to business. Maybe. Maybe they just need some time in the UK. Maybe they need to be around us, you know, the rain, the pie, the mash, cups of tea, and a bit of come dine with me on the hotel room TV. Maybe that's going to get them back to winning ways. Well, better come dine with me. Of course it will. Dear Lord, what a sad little life. Talking of wins and losses, it is time to check in on the team standings. Well, sort of, because last week was Mudeng. This week, we have seen the NFL come to London. So we are seeing what classic London experience your team is at the moment. Five out of five, you have got the double-decker red bus, and it's empty. You're on the top deck, front row, driving this thing to the playoffs, AKA the Vikings. 
The Kansas City Chiefs also haven't lost yet. Four wins, one loss. You're at the Morrisons in Peckham and your trolley already has a pound in it. Things are looking good, just like the Houston Texans and the Washington Commanders. Three and two. You've flown over from Dublin for London games and you've hit the pub. You're winning because you've got the Guinness on tap, but things definitely don't taste quite right this side of the Irish Sea. You know what I mean, Cowboys? Two wins, two losses. You are from the north and you've stepped into London town. You've tried to give a little smile, cheers drive to the bus driver like a normal, friendly northerner would do. No response. Oh my gosh, I don't like the sound of that. Wouldn't want it. <laughs> Two wins, three losses. You've got on the tube and you managed to get a seat, but putting your bag down on the seat hasn't stopped the old lady trying to squeeze in right next to you. Things are looking a little strained for teams like the Raiders, the Dolphins, and the 49ers. Now it gets really bad. We've got one win, four losses. It is Houston Station on a Sunday afternoon. Nobody wants to be there, but you are stuck with that losing feeling. And can I say, some big names in this category. What names are they, please, Ellie? We've got the Rams. Oh. We've got the Patriots. We've got Joe Burrow and the Bengals. Oh, oh my gosh. Just don't want to be there. That's bad company right there. It really is. <laughs> All right, let's start the clock and start the one minute drill. First off, we have to talk about the sweet moment for Detroit Lions fan Eminem. Chicka chicka Slim Shady, who found out that he's going to be a granddad with his daughter buying him a personalized jersey. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones being the absolute boss, arriving to practice in his helicopter. The Vikings celebrated their win on Sunday, hitting a parent trap themed celly. How long did it take them to remember that? The ref may have lied on his CV at the Bills versus Texans game. Before they fumbled the basketball. Brian Thomas Jr. reached a top speed of 22.15 miles an hour on his 85-yard touchdown, the fastest speed by a ball carrier this season, making him illegally fast around hospitals, schools, and the entirety of Chichester and Norwich. We had one of the wildest touchdowns of the season by the LA Rams. What's going on here? The Bears had a comfortable win over the Carolina Panthers, but Caleb Williams didn't have such a comfortable touchdown and spiked himself. And finally, can we just appreciate the ice on this guy, Keon Coleman of the Bills. That is a serious chain, gotta be heavy. Time's up. Did you watch the London games or are you gonna be here next week? Let us know, you might see myself or Ellie outside the stadium or inside, right? Maybe. Or in the locker room, you never know. Let us know in the comments and we will see you soon. Peace.